Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. In a previous video, I showed how we could create a setup that incorporated multiple WCS outputs so that we could program a part one time and then we could get a G54, a G55, a G56 so that we could run the same operation in three different vices at once. And I got a fair amount of emails and even a couple comments on the YouTube videos asking, how could you take the same part and sort of do a production run on an op one, an op two, an op three, and so on down the road. So I'm going to use the speed vice handle to show this. A side note, I'm getting closer to getting the machine powered up and running. And this is a part that I know quite well. And it would be a good little part for me to test and also a production part. So what I'm going to probably do is I will make 10 or 20 of these speed vice handles and then I'll do a giveaway. So keep an eye out here on how you can go about getting one of those speed vice handles. Let's take a look at what I've done for this so far. So this is an m -lock vice. It's the it's the 125 Duo, it's called. It's got a front and a rear position. And the way that I've set this up is it's got the gripper jaws in the front and the soft jaws in the back. And these vices are gonna be coming to the Fusion uh, work holding direct, uh, directory pretty soon too. So keep your eye out there if you're using m -lock vices and want to have parametric versions of the vices that you use in both inch and metric. Um, so I, I've set this up to be parametric and it was pretty quick and easy to get this set up the way that I needed it to be. Now let's take a look at how I have this set up. So if I edit my first setup, you see where my WCS is. And then on the post process tab, I have this set up as a number one. So that's going to give me a GVD4. If I come to my soft jaw operation and I edit this, I can turn off this speed vice handle for a second to make it clearer to see. <clears throat> Note that the stock is completely bounding the two soft jaws. There's only one piece of stock. I didn't do an individual piece or anything like that. I'm just gonna pretend like these are being made at the same time and I'm gonna put a quarter inch spacer between the two jaws before I cut them. I put the WCS in the top left corner up here and then on the post process tab, I have this set up as a number two or a GVD5. I'm gonna go ahead and hit home. I'm gonna edit my handle flip and now you can see that I'm just cutting the speed vice handle. I've got my WCS at the exact same location as I did for the speed vice handle. I had to choose a little bit differently this time, but it's the same point. And then under the post process tab, I have this set up as well as number two. So that's gonna give me a G55. So uh, op one here is a G54, the soft jaws is a 55, and the handle flip is a 55. So that's how this is gonna run. Let's do a quick run through the cam on these so you can see how things are gonna cut and then we will see uh, the feature of this video and see programs. So I'm gonna simulate handle top, I'm gonna hit play. You can see we're gonna face it. I'm gonna adaptive clear it with a shear hog, a big shear hog. I'm gonna drill a bunch of uh, spot drill holes and then I'm gonna use an eighth inch drill to take out the corners. I'm gonna come with a 201 and then uh, tap drill that and then I'm gonna adaptive clear the inside with a quarter inch and then I'm gonna go around the outside and do a finished contour, repeat that, and then do the same exact thing on the inside of those two pockets to clean that up nicely, and then a chamfering operation to finish this op up. So that's what this uh, piece of stock is going to look like once it's done with op one. Let's look at what the soft jaw operation is gonna do. So I'm gonna click on soft jaws and simulate that. And now again, there's no material between these two faces, but Fusion's gonna show that it's solid the way that I did this. So I'm just gonna let this go really quick. In fact, you'll get the idea. We're just gonna do an adaptive with a quarter inch tool. I'm gonna skip ahead. A pocketing operation comes and cleans up the floors and the walls. And then the last thing is a 2D chamfer comes and takes all the burrs off the edges and I even did across the front edges in case we raise up a burr or anything down there. So we don't have to worry about that interfering with the seating of our uh, speed vice handle. For the final cam, I'm gonna turn on the speed vice handle. And I'm gonna click on my handle flip and I'm gonna simulate this. And then I'm gonna start out by using a 3D adaptive with a shear hog to get rid of the hat of material that's on top of the part. Once that hat is gone, a face mill is gonna come clean it up and then I'm gonna do the chamfering operations. Now, this operation doesn't look so good. It looks like I'm really hogging through material, but what you have to remember is I can't accurately simulate the stock currently between the first setup and the third setup. So everything below the top face of this part that's showing up as stock in this particular setup is not there. 
So this would all look really nice. We just have to kind of use our imagination. Keep your eye out and I think I'm going to be able to show you some cool technology coming down the road that's going to help those uh, multi-op stock um, displays going forward. So there's our cam, uh, how we're going to cam up this part. And now what I wanted to show you guys was something called NC Program. So currently the way we post programs out is we come up to the actions panel and we click on the post process and we choose which, which operation we want to post or which setup we want to post, which post processor we want to use and all that jazz. We're going to be gently nudged to start using NC programs and then eventually NC programs is going to be our primary option for posting uh, G code out. You're going to see that I'm not actually going to post the G code, but I'm going to get it set up for posting. So I want to create an NC program. I'm going to call this 1001 and then on the operations tab I have to tell Fusion which setups do I want to include in this program. So there's no reason that I can't run the handle top and the soft jaws at the same time and without the reorder uh, to minimize tool changes you'll see that uh, the quarter inch tool gets used in a couple different places. So if we come down through here and look, where's, there's my tool uh, four, and then we come back, we run some other tools, and then tool number four pops back up again. But if I check reorder to minimize tool changes, all the tool number fours are now together. So Fusion is smart enough to kind of combine things. And so I'll hit OK, and that'll create an NC program here. And let's simulate that and see what it looks like. So it's not going to simulate the backside operation. And let me turn this handle off to make this look a little bit more clear. So we're going to face it. And then we're going to use our shear hog. I'm going to skip through some of these drilling operations to get us to the good stuff. And here we're at our quarter inch tool. So we're going to do our adaptive and then our contours are on the outside of it and come back and clean up the contours on the inside of the part. And once that's done, you're going to see we're going to jump over to the soft jaws now and start doing that first operation from the soft jaws. So from the soft jaws, there we are. We're on, we're on the first operation, the 2D adaptive. I can skip ahead. It'll do the pocketing to clean up the floors and the walls. And then we're going to jump back and do the chamfer on the first part. And then when that chamfer is done, it's going to go and chamfer the soft jaws. So with NC programs, I was able to create one program that minimizes my tool changes and makes things efficient. So that's going to be the first NC program I'm going to make. Now let's go do a second one. So I'm going to choose NC program again. And this time I'm going to call this 1002. And then on my operations tab, I want to do handle top. And I also want to do handle flip in this case. So when I run this program, this is what's going to allow me to do the production. I'll just put one in the front side. I'll put one in the uh, soft jaws in the back. I'll hit cycle start. And every time when a cycle is done, a completed soft or a completed speed vice handle will come out of the soft jaws. So again, if we look here with the minimize uh, tool changes, we'll see that all the tools are in line. So here's the shear hog from operation work offset one, and here's the shear hog from work offset two. So they've been combined together. And let's go ahead and hit okay. So we'll also see that there's some intelligence built into this as well. So I'm gonna turn the handle back on and I'll go ahead and simulate this. So we're gonna see the facing operation goes ahead and then the shear hog operation runs. I'm gonna skip ahead. And what you'll see now is it'll go do the adaptive operation on the second setup. And then it's come to the first one, it's gonna do a bunch of stuff here, drilling and uh, some quarter inch work. And then it'll probably come and do some chamfering, but, uh, and then it's gonna do the facing operation and then, and then chamfer again. So the way I have this set up is Fusion is smart enough to know that, hey, I can't run the chamfer on the second, on the third operation, I guess the handle flip, until all that material is removed off the top. And it also reordered the way that I did those chamfers that are on there. Um, it put the chamfer, it, it did the chamfer here and then did the face and did the chamfer again. So it's being safe in understanding that it can't just group tools together no matter what. It has to put them together in a different way. So if I was happy with my NC program, I could just come out here and edit this. And then I could go ahead and just hit post and it would then post that uh, file to the directory where I want it to go basing on all the settings that I have here. So my output folder, I've just got to go into my desktop right now. Um, I've got this set up with the Siemens post that I think is going to be the one that I'm going to use to run the style, although there's going to be a new post coming from that from Autodesk uh, in the near future. So that might change. But this program should be pretty much ready to go to do a little mini production run. 
I hope that answers some of the questions that's, that people may have had about how to do production runs of parts where you're finishing a part complete and not just doing the same operation in multiple vices at the same time. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And uh, if you want to email me, you can always send me an email to info at mechanical advantage if you have a video idea or something like that that you'd like to discuss. And as always, thanks for watching.